In this video, we take a brief look into the workings of object relations theory and discover how it can help us to understand the developmental mechanisms behind our personality. Melanie Klein, an Austrian-born psychoanalyst, was the originator of object relations theory. She developed this based on her clinical work with children and adults and her observations of early parent-child relationships. Her theories, which were considered controversial at the time, differed from that of Freud's and brought forth new perspectives on child development. Freud focused on innate drives and intrapsychic conflicts. Freud proposed that child development occurs in a series of psychosexual stages, oral, anal, phallic and latent, as well as the genital stages. Each stage is characterised by the focus of libidinal or sexual energy on different erogenous zones of the body. On the other hand, Klein believed that the early interactions between infants and their caregivers profoundly shaped their internal world and laid a foundation for future emotional development and relationships. In a nutshell, object relations refers to the way individuals perceive and relate to other people during their early development, especially significant others like their primary caregiver. She introduced the concept of internalised objects, which reside within the individual psyche and influence their emotions and behaviours. These objects are mental representations of important people in an individual's life, in particular their primary caregiver. These representations can also include parts of a person or objects from one's inner world. For example, an individual may relate to the symbolic meaning of the breast as a source of nourishment and comfort, which then becomes part of their internalised image of their mother. These internalised objects influence emotions, attitudes and behaviours in relationships throughout life. The internalised representations or mental images that the infant experiences in relation to their primary caregiver fall into two main categories, good objects and bad objects. Good objects in object relations theory represent the positive and nurturing aspect of an object, especially the primary caregiver. They are formed based on experiences of comfort, care and emotional support, leading to feelings of security love and trust. Good objects serve as sources of comfort and emotional nourishment, contributing to the individual's well-being and positive attachment experiences. Bad objects, on the other hand, symbolise the negative and threatening aspects of significant others or the primary caregiver. They arise from experiences of frustration, neglect or perceived harm from the caregiver, leading to feelings of anxiety, fear and disappointment. Within the infant's mind, the same object can be represented as a good object and a bad object. For example, when the mother's breasts are full and baby is getting nourished, the mother may be perceived as a good object. But when the mother's breast is empty and the baby is left feeling hungry or dissatisfied, mother may be perceived as being a bad object. In object relations theory, the process of a child's relation to good objects and bad objects in early infancy is described through two main positions, the paranoid schizoid position and the depressive position. These positions represent different stages of emotional development and how infants perceive and relate to the world and their primary caregiver. During the paranoid schizoid position, infants in this stage are primarily driven by primitive emotions and impulses. They experience the world in a fragmented manner with a tendency to see others as either all good or all bad. The paranoid aspect refers to the baby's fear of being attacked or overwhelmed by hostile internal and external forces. The schizoid aspect relates to the split off and disconnected nature of the infant's experiences. There are five key characteristics of the paranoid schizoid position. The dominant defence mechanism during this stage is splitting where the infant experiences the world in a fragmented and polarised manner. They tend to split their experiences into good and bad without integrating both aspects. 
This splitting also applies to their perception of their primary caregiver, whom they may see as either entirely loving and nurturing, like with the good breast or the good mother, or entirely harmful and withholding, like the bad breast or the bad mother. Another characteristic feature is primitive anxiety. In this position, the infant may experience anxieties and paranoia related to the fear of being harmed, attacked or overwhelmed by the bad objects or caregivers. They may also experience fear of annihilation, leading to a basic need for survival and protection. The infant may engage in projective identification a defence mechanism where they protect their own feelings, particularly aggressive impulses, onto the caregiver. The infant may feel that their aggressive feelings are being put into the caregiver, making the caregiver seem hostile or rejecting. Another characteristic is emotional turmoil. The infant's emotions during this stage can be intense and volatile. They may experience both pleasure and discomfort and the feelings can change rapidly. Finally, at this early stage of development, the infant's sense of self is not yet fully formed. They experience themselves and the world as fragmented and undifferentiated. There are four key characteristics that occur during the depressive position, which occurs from six months onwards in the infant's life. As the infant's emotional development progresses, they move into the phase of integration. During this stage, the infant begins to integrate the good and bad aspects of their experiences with their caregiver, leading to a more complex and realistic understanding of relationships. So instead of seeing the mother as all good or all bad, the infant is able to see that the mother is a mixture of both good and bad components. Another key aspect of the depressive position is that the infant starts to develop a sense of guilt and concern for the well-being of their primary caregiver. The infant may feel remorse for their aggressive impulses, for example, having angry feelings towards their caregiver, and they may also start to fear losing their love and care as a consequence of them having showed angry and aggressive impulses towards their primary caregiver. The infants may also experience ambivalence. The depressive position involves a mix of both positive and negative feelings towards the caregiver. The infant experiences a more nuanced and layered view of their caregivers as they integrate both loving and angry feelings. And finally, the infant will develop their capacity for whole object relations. Through the depressive position, the infant begins to form whole object relations where they can see caregivers as a complete and complex entity with both positive and negative qualities. What we see from object relations theory is that the early stages of emotional development have a profound impact on how an individual's personality develops. These early views and responses to environmental emergencies shape how a person handles emotions and copes with stress as they grow older. Detachment styles formed during these stages also influence a person's attitude to forming and maintaining relationships, which consequently plays a crucial role in shaping personality over time. Whilst secure attachments lead to healthier personality development, Anxious or avoidant attachment styles can lead to difficulties in forming meaningful relationships with others. Additionally, unresolved conflicts and disorganised attachment styles may contribute to personality difficulties in future. It is also important to remember that personality development is a complex process influenced by various factors and individuals have the ability to shape their personalities through personal growth and life experiences. This was just a brief and very simplified overview of object relations theory, which in actuality runs into much greater complexity. I will be using this theory to help to shine a light on the development of the schizoid personality and other personality types 
in future videos on this channel.